But then once a year, the high priest went into the holiest of all. That is through the third curtain. One more time, please look back at me. Tradition, Jewish tradition tells us strongly something amazing about the high priest going in. All other of the six Jewish feasts were times of partying and revelry, but not the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It was very serious. They confessed their sins for 24 hours. The priest would go in, and they were on pins and needles to see whether or not God would accept the sacrifice of the blood because he would get blood from the brazen altar to bring in. And when he was in there, the Ark of the Covenant was in. Uh, sitting in front of him. But before he went in, according to Jewish tradition, they tied a rope round his ankle so that if God didn't accept it and he was struck dead, then nobody else could go in because they would be struck dead also so they could yank out his body. Such was the fearsomeness of the holiest of all. And in there was the Ark of the Covenant. It's like a box with a lid on it. The box was uh, wood, shittim wood, we called the acacia wood, overlaid with pure gold everywhere. Speaking of Christ and His humanity and His divinity, and speaking of the believer in our humanity and in the imparted righteousness which God has given to us. There were three items in the box. I have no time for them. It's on the free video. But there were three things in the box. And then there was the lid, which was solid gold, called the mercy seat, or the lid or the caparis. That's another teaching too. And the gold was beaten not only as a lid, but into the shape of two cherubim who looked at each other face-wise, but eyes-wise they were down. And when the priest went in there with the blood, he sprinkled it seven times on the floor and stood on top of it. And then he sprinkled it seven times on the mercy seat to indicate that the only way you could be in the fierce, awesome presence of God was by standing upon the blood of somebody else. In this instance, it was an animal, but that, of course, was only a type and shadow of the Christ that would come. That's how he would get in there, and when uh, the people were gathered round about in silence, millions of them, they would listen. And, of course, if there was total silence then they would be scared to death because at the bottom of his robe he had a, a, a pomegranate and, and, uh, and like a bell, we would say, all the way around. And of course, they would hear him moving very, very, very lightly. And if that was the case, then they were relieved. And then he would come back out and say that God had forgiven sins. And where did God dwell? In between those two cherubim, right in the middle. There was no light there either, but it was lit up more than the noonday sun. Why? Because that's where the Shekinah glory of God was. God himself was there. God didn't say, I will meet you at the place of your own good works. I will meet you at the place of money for miracles. I will meet you at the place of your own ability. He said, I will meet you at the mercy seat. If I were to say to you, hey, let's meet tomorrow at 3 o'clock at uh, Tarpon Springs Post Office, and I showed up and you showed up at Kmart, we're never going to meet. A lot of people are trying to reach God and they're showing up at the wrong place. Amen. Their own ability, money, whatever else. God said, the only place to meet me is at the mercy seat. And more than that, it's the blood sprinkled. In fact, the Hebrew says it far stronger. The Hebrew says the blood splattered mercy seat. No wonder we rejoice in this place and we can sing it over and over again. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God was wanting us to get up to the west side. You've got to hear this illustration. I know I'm going fast. It's the review. It's almost over. Then we start on the table to show bread. Hear this illustration. It's a good one. A man is walking along the riverbank. Suddenly he hears a despairing cry. He looks out into the river and there's a fellow evidently going down for the third time. He's drowning and it's a terrible situation. The fellow on the riverbank sees a rope and he grabs the rope and he throws it the best he can and the fellow in the river grabs the rope. Now for a moment, pause and think of this. It's a far better situation than it was He's going to be saved. He's got the rope. He's not going under. It's not a perfect situation because he's still in the river. But they're at each end of the rope. Here's one end. Here's another end. Don't leave it there. Because the purpose is not just to say, well, you're saved. You can stay there. Glug, 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 glug. The idea is pull them in so that both are at the same end of the rope. 
Now let me tell you, here's what happens with God. He throws us a rope. We grab that rope. Thank God we're saved. But that's just the start. It's just the entrance. You just get through the east. He wants you to get up to the west. Do you know that's why the psalmist said, as far as the east is from the west? He's not talking geographically. That doesn't make sense. He was talking about the tabernacle. As sure as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your iniquities from you. What God wants is not only for you to be saved, but to come on up through the laver, get into the Word, get into the table of showbread, be led by the Spirit, give Him your prayers and praise, and get right up to where He is so that you're in the box. For the box of the Ark of the Covenant represents Christ and those three items, and you're in Christ and the capereth, or the lid is on top, and God's in between the two cherubim so that you're actually covered from the fierceness of God by the covering. The Bible says that Christ is that covering. In Greek, it's a powerful word. He has totally covered you. It means a guillotine's falling and a man just escaped it because it stopped. Thank God we're under the covering of the blood. You can see the typology, the symbolism, and how magnificent it is. And there are thousands of verses, not hundreds or dozens, thousands of verses to bear all of this out. It is just absolutely beautiful. God wants you to get up to the far end. 